Hello everyone, welcome to Pediatrics and Neonatology. This video is about infant colic. Infant colic is characterized by severe and proxismal crying that occurs mainly in the late afternoon. The infant's knees are drawn up and its fists are clenched. Flatus is expelled, the faces is pained and there is minimal response to attempts at soothing. Now, studies have shown that among middle class infants, Crying occupies about 2 hours per day at 2 weeks of age, about 3 hours per day by 6 weeks and gradually decreases to about 1 hour per day by 3 months. Now the word colic is derived from the Greek word kolikos which means pertaining to the colon. Although colic has traditionally been attributed to the gastrointestinal disturbances but this has never been proved. Colic is a behavior sign or symptom that begins in the first few weeks of life and peaks at age 2 to 3 months. In about 30 to 40 percent of the cases, colic continues into the fourth and fifth months. A colicky infant is defined by a vessel is one who is healthy and well fed but cries for more than 3 hours a day, for more than 3 days a week and for more than 3 weeks commonly referred to as rule of threes. The important word in this definition is healthy. Thus, before the diagnosis of colic can be made, the pediatrician must rule out the diseases that might cause crying, with the exception of the few infants who respond to the elimination of the cow's milk from its own or the mother's diet. There has been little firm evidence of an association of colic with allergic disorders. Now, gastroesophageal reflux is often suspected as a cause of colicky crying in the young infants. Other infant conditions that commonly causes pain include acute otitis media, skin lesion, hair tornagrades, oral ulcerations, and insect bites. In addition, undetected corneal abrasion urinary tract infection and unrecognized traumatic injuries including child abuse must be among the physical causes of crying considered in evaluating these infants. So when all the pathological causes are excluded, this then leaves characteristics intrinsic to the child and parental caretaking pattern as contributing to the colic. Now, infant behavior states have three features. First, they are self-organizing, that is, they are maintained until it is necessary to shift to another one. Number two, they are stable over several minutes. And number three, the same stimulus elicit a state-specific response that is different from the other states. Now, the behavior states of a baby are crying state, a quiet alert state an active alert state, a transitional state, and a state of deep sleep. The states of importance with respect to colic are the crying state and the transitional state. During transition from one state to another, infant behavior may be more easily influenced. Once an infant is in a stable state, for example crying, it becomes more difficult to bring about a change for example, to soothe. Now, how these transitions are accomplished is probably influenced by the infant's temperament and neurologic maturity. Some infants move from one state to another easily and can be diverted easily, while other infants sustain a particular state and are resistant to change. Now, the other component to be considered in evaluating the colicky infant is the feeding and handling behavior of the caregiver. Colic is a behavior phenomena that involves interaction between the infant and the caregiver. Now, different caregivers perceive and respond to the crying behavior differently. If the caregiver perceives the crying infant as being spoiled and demanding, and is not sensitive to or knowledgeable about the infant cues and rhythms, or is hurried and rough with the baby, the infant's ability to organize and soothe itself 
or respond to the caregiver's attempt at soothing may be compromised. Alternatively, if the temperament of an infant with colic is understood and the rhythm and cues deciphered, crying can be anticipated and the caregiver can intervene before the behavior become organized in the crying state and more difficult to extinguish. Now here are some approaches that can be taken to the management of colic. Parents may need to be educated about the developmental characteristic of the crying behavior and made aware that crying increases normally into the second month and abates by the third to fourth month. Next, parents may need reassurance based on a complete history and physical examination that the infant is not sick. Although these behaviors are stressful, they are a normal variant and are usually self-limited. Now, this discussion can be facilitated by having the parent keep a diary of crying and weight gain. If there is diurnal pattern and adequate weight gain, an underlying disease process is less likely to be present. Parental anxiety must be relieved because it may be contributing to the problem. For parents to effectively soothe and comfort the infant, they need to understand the baby's cues. The pediatrician can help by observing the infant's behavior and devising intervention aimed at calming both the infant and the parents. Techniques for calming infants include Dr. Harvey Karp's 5S. Number 1. Swaddling. Number 2. Side or stomach holding. Number 3. Soothing noises such as shushing, singing, soft music or white noise. 4. Swinging or slow rhythmic movements such as rocking, walking, riding in a car or walks in the stroller. And number 5. Sucking on a pacifier. However, if soothing strategies are not working, the infant can be left alone in a safe place such as a crib to rest for a while. This may alleviate overstimulation and excessive handling in some infants. Another approach is to change the feeding habits so that the infant is not rushed and has ample opportunity to burp. Overfeeding a baby should always be discouraged. And in bottle feeding babies, ensure adequate yet not excessive bottle nipple flow. Now, if necessary, infant can be fed more frequently because by increasing the feeding frequency, baby takes less milk each time but the total daily requirement is the same. This decreases gastric distension which may be contributing to the colic. Next, medications such as phenobarbital elixir and dicyclomene have been found to be somewhat helpful but their use should be discouraged because of the risk of adverse reactions and overdosage. However, a trial of ranitidine hydrochloride might be of help if gastroesophageal reflux is contributing to the child's discomfort. Now, alternative treatment such as chamomile, fennel, vervain, licorice, and balm mint teas have not been approved for use in infants because they can cause serious side effects such as hyponatremia and anemia. Now, nursing mothers should also avoid excessive caffeine and alcohol. Now, for the colic that is refractory to behavior management, a trial of changing the feedings, eliminating cow's milk from the formula or from the mother's diet if she is nursing may be indicated. Okay friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative videos.